Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request. It's time for Jonathan Lindsay. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for this best way to put a Christmas story Christmas. It's a weird title to say, but it is the I just would call official sequel to a Christmas story. Now, this comes from a guy. Before I get into that, for those who want to send in any paid requests, topic, reaction, review, re review, what have you, you can request pretty much anything. You do feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box, pretty much under any of these videos. I'm going in 85 directions because A Christmas Story, I know it's an unpopular opinion to say that I'm not a fan of A Christmas Story. It's not the worst movie ever. It's not one of the worst movies ever. It's not one of the worst Christmas movies ever. I do think it's one of the more overrated Christmas movies because I know there's people that think it's a classic. You're crazy. I'm sorry. I find nothing funny about the film. And I like Darren McGavin as the dad. But, yeah, it got referenced a lot, but, okay, there's a leg that looks like a lamp, and there's a the little kid being tipped by Santa Claus, and he wants a BB gun. I just, it didn't do much for me. Yeah, I didn't grow with the film. I saw the film once or twice all the way through my life. It was eh, just not big on it. So you had a Christmas story, too. A very lazy, trash, beat for beat sequel. There was a might as well be a remake of the first. Very goofy, but annoyingly goofy. Daniel Stern being very over the top, and it wasn't the worst sequel ever. I mean, I've seen much worse, Sally, like Christmas Vacation too. But it's still a pretty bad movie. Very lazy. Oh, there's the guy getting this ton stuck in another thing. Oh, here's more daydreams. Oh, here it just and in a way this does the same thing as well or similar. Although I will say this is a much better sequel than a Christmas story 2. And that's why like I'm not big on this only because it's connection to a film I'm not big on in the first place. But it's not a rant because I do think in all fairness, that if you are a fan of the first film, you're not going to mind this one. Because I do think that his heart is in the right place. Peter Billingsley does come back. He was the kid in the first one. He comes back as the dad in this one. And while, again, I wasn't big on it, and at times it does follow certain... Remember this, remember this, remember this, the member berries. There's a lot of that in this. It didn't feel as annoying or as aggravating or as hard to watch compared to A Christmas Story 2. Now, Peter Billingsley, which I remember more from the Dirt Bike Kid, <laughs> where the kid had a little bicycle that was alive. He was also in this horror film called Death Valley in 1982. After a few years, he got away from acting and became a producer. He worked with John Favreau a lot and helped produce. I think he helped produce Elf. I know he helped produce Iron Man. So he worked with John Favreau a lot and ultimately got to producing this film and starring in it. He's doing the voiceover. He's the lead. You could tell that he. It's. If he's acted recently then the rust must still be on because it's pretty rough to watch him. I don't think, as an adult, he's a natural actor. I've seen much worse, but I've seen better as well. I mean, he's not as dead-faced as Alex Vinson from Child's Play when he became an adult actor in that... I've seen one episode of Chucky. He was in some of the late, late Chucky movies... Great kid actor, adult actor, not as much. Same with Peter Billingsley, although if he has a doll, I would his acting's a bit better than Alex Vincent. 
But if you like the novelty of seeing him as an adult, here you go. Know. It takes place in 1973. He has a wife. He's got two kids. He's a writer, but nothing's working out. And what I mean by there's a lot of Easter egg, remember this, references. Like when he's talking to the doctor. The doctor. God, what doctor? Who am I doing? When he's talking to this guy to hopefully get a job. His boss. He bribes him with something, and the boss takes it and puts it in the drawer, much like when the kid tried to impress the teacher, and the te- Was it- God, I'm going over the place. See, this shows- I'm the wrong guy to review this fucking movie, because I didn't grow with the original film. I'm not a diehard fan of the original film, so it doesn't matter what the fuck I say. Just, just after five, six minutes, save people the headache. I apologize. In the original, it was either he was trying to suck up to the teacher or if he was something the teacher wanted. Anyway, the teacher grabbed it and put it in the desk with a bunch of other stuff. Same the boss takes this gift, puts it in a drawer with a bunch of other stuff. I mean, the very end credits of the film literally does a scene comparison. This is what it was like in the original. This is how we homage it in the new one. This is how we did in the original. This is how we homage in the, the new one. They literally tell you in the end credits how many homages they had. Remember this. Remember this. Remember the nostalgia. And it, at least it was honest and upfront in doing it. Maybe that's what Star Wars Force Awakens should have done. This is how the original Star Wars, this is how we ripped it off. Or homage. He still has daydreams, in this case, like, winning an award for being a writer. There's other daydreams he has, just like he had in the original film. It is still pretty much the family getting together, and it's kind of these random things going on, going up until Christmas. Remember the scene in the original where Darren McGavin, the dad, and the mom, they sit next to each other, walk... Looked out the window and there's the tree to the side over here. Yeah, the same type of shot in this. What I meant by the, it's hard is in the right place where it, I don't get as mad about it. Spoiler alert. Super spoilers. Because Darren McGavin died in real life, they put that into the story where he gets a call from his mom who tells him that his dad died. And I thought that scene worked rather well. Gives a bit of a heart and emotion to the story. You do see little references of Darren McGavin. Footage from the original film. Hints of his voice. I thought that was a nice tip to the hat to Darren McGavin's character. And super spoilers, when you get to the end of the film. Oh, we don't have these presents because they were stolen. Well, you find out Darren McGavin's character... He got all the presents just in case anything happened, including his own health. So technically his dad saved the day. So I thought that was a nice ode to Darren McGavin, who is an actor I enjoyed ever since I saw him in Colch at the Night Stalker. So that was nice. That at least is a bit more heart and merit than a lot of these sequels delve into. And like I said, it's hard as in the right place to have that type of same feeling with the narration and the way that the words are exhibited, in this case through Peter Billingsley's mouth as an adult, during the narration. Like a bunch of people at a bar and a phone, one of their girlfriends or wives are calling, and he says, for whom the bill tolls. Oh no, he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, there's some decent, sweet, harmless humor, like there's terrorers and the mom wants everybody to lay down so that they uh, they can avoid. But then the wife of Peter Billingsley decides to go to the door. Oh, they're just terrorers. I used to be a terrorer. And, and the mom's like, what are you talking about? Like, it's nothing mean or rude or harsh. Oh, and the mom is played by Julie Hadrity. 
it was nice to see her because I guess the the actress who played the mom in the original she retired officially and she did not want to come back for anything just hey I'm retired so they got Julie Hadderty that name sounds familiar she was an airplane an airplane to the sequel so nice to see her in this as the mom she worked well And kind of these random little events that happened. They did a huge tree, which reminds me of Christmas Vacation, which I would say I like better. I does say I like this better than than this. Because again, yeah, they're both. There's a scene where they get a tree and they go, "Oh, it's too big." But yeah, I, th I thought it was done better than that one. But there's a lot of little references to the original. If you like that kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff you like. In the original, don't put, don't put your eye out. And here, he actually hits his daughter in the eye with a snowball. So she's got to wear an eye patch. So the whole don't put your eye out or don't shoot your eye out. There's a bit where kids go up to a Santa Claus to talk with him. They repeat that dad in this. A lot of the shots get replicated. And like you said, they blatantly tell you during the end credits all the little moments that do that. So that depends on how you feel about that. To me, I'm like, okay, it's this is definitely meant to be a, a fairly big nostalgia trip. And again, as a guy that's not big on the original, it didn't do a whole lot for me. Once again, one of his friends does a dare. Only one does it to the other guy's payback for when they were kids. And in this case, is to ride this sharp ramp. Which even that reminded me of Christmas Vacation as well. When Chevy Chase gets on the sled and he goes down and is flipping around. Here someone goes down a ramp. So that's like the second time now I'm thinking of Christmas Vacation. I'm just thinking, I rather just go rewatch this film. I'd rather just go rewatch this movie than, than watch this movie again. Like, the, the kids are fine. The wife is fine. There's nothing that bad about it. Uh, for those who are huge fans, a lot of the actors do come back. Even, what was it, Zach Ward. He's an actor who was in the original film as the bully. And he's been in other films he was in. He was in Freddy vs. Jason. He's the guy who is part of the dream that he slid his wrist in the bathtub and he's acting like Freddy to steer the other guy this is the other his brother he's also been in some Uwe Ball films he comes back and I predicted what they were going to do with it. it it was pretty predictable I mean when you see him in a cop uniform you just know it's going to be this, oh, it's really not that bad. Like, you think it's going to be a bad thing that's going to happen, but instead, he's reformed. I don't know, I just see that coming a mile away. <clears throat> and I don't know, it's just one of those movies that I watch, and I go... Like I said, it's another sort of random little set of events that... Many scenes, the way they are shot or the way they, for people who are hardcore into the original film, is going to subconsciously remind you. Like when our main character kept checking the mail for the decoder ring in the original, here he kept checking the mail because of this potential job offer for his writing. <clears throat> uh, the dare stuff, the... You think you're not going to get this present, but instead you do get this present by the end of it. Nice surprise. I think one nice little bit of business that people would like is super spoilers. He writes an obituary for his dad. And it goes over so well that publications want to see more of this. And so he starts reading what he wrote, and it is the story from A Christmas Story. 
So you find out that the narration in the first film is part of the story that's an obituary for his dad who passed away. I thought that was a nice twist on it. That was a nice realization. That's what I mean. Like it's If you're huge in the, to the original film and you want to see Peter Billingsley back and you don't mind references here and there to the original like I didn't find it that funny but I didn't find the original that funny so again I'm the wrong guy to ask about it but it's nothing that for me to get angry about like even the original like it's a rant because I think it's pretty overrated I just didn't think it was funny and here it's like you know this is a movie that I don't think it's going to become a classic. I don't think it's going to be remembered for years and years to come. But it wasn't as horrible, terrible, annoying, god-awful as a lot of sequels are. It is it is what it is. Like I said, Peter Billingsley is rough around the edges in terms of acting. And you kind of... I'm not saying there's no new stuff, but it's just, you know, the constant little member berry moments, just, I don't know, when you're like me and you're wanting new stuff, it's like, uh, it seemed just, not as lazy as Christmas Story 2, but it's like, okay, yeah, uh, it's really getting to the nostalgia of the first. And, uh. I guess that's up to you to find out whether that works for you or not. So. Like I said, I probably got a little chuckle out of the caroling scene where the mom, Julie, had had her tease like, Save the children! Let's hide from them. Uh, a nice little surprise chuckle I got when he turns and accidentally hits his daughter in the eye with a snowball. Because it goes by so quick and she falls. That's a nice bit of a black humor slapstick. I would see the very, very end I didn't predict since I kept talking about predictability. But the very end that, oh, is the story from the first film. That made sense. I thought that was a nice touch. And let's say it's a nice little ode to Darren McGavin. Respect. Let's just bit of respect on that character. Um, so that's for me. It, it didn't really do much of anything to really make me mad or piss me off. Like I said, I'm just very neutral on the movie because of my little... Because of my dissociation with the first film. Like I said, Christmas movies for me... Die Hard, Lead the Weapon, but if action films don't count, then it'd be Strooged, Jingle All the Way, Ernest Saves Christmas, Gremlins, you know, various other movies, Bad Santa, Christmas Vacation, among those that, Home Alone, that I prefer more than Christmas Story. But like I say, if you're a big fan of that film, this is much better than Christmas Story 2. At least it looks more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And it's nothing that horrendously garbage. It's at least... Eh. It was there. I think, you know, some people were really hardcore. They might enjoy this a lot more than I did. So. Like I say, if you're a fan of the first, give it a look. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.